split and he's back and he says, boy, how long? I said, 20 minutes have been used as a channel. So they, uh, again, the spirit entered into him and uh, the spirit said that he was a spirit counselor that could give him the information that he was looking for. So, um, again, it was given verbally and it was the voice of Camellia Hood. Now, how did you know that it was the voice? Well, because of the fact, you see, I was a youngster in those days, <laughs> just about ready to go into the army. And uh, Camille we used to listen to the uh, radio. We had no television in those days, so it was only radio and read newspaper. And all the speeches of Camille made and all of the, it was on the radio all the time. Now, in those days, they had no tape recorders, such as we have now. So they would, Camille would have to go to the uh, Canadian Broadcasting Studio, yeah. where they made a record. A real phonograph record, and then they played it over and over, you know, for the rest so of the So you day, listened you know. to those as a teenager before you went into oh, the army. So you yeah. knew his voice. So his voice really good. So uh, I said to uh, uh, George, he was sitting next to me. He said, "Isn't it amazing?" He said, "If you think that's amazing, wait." He says until the spirits uh, impersonate one of the departed people that you know personally, like an uncle or a brother or a sister or something like that. He says, that is unique. But that's the way it was. You are able to reproduce a, a voice, man, and the, the, uh, just to perfection. Hmm. The spirits are exceedingly proud of this because, and, and this also uh, was right up my alley, the priest said that as the times on this planet gets more and more difficult. And calamities of all kinds are striking the planet more and more frequently. Demon spirits are going to impress people with, with the, the importance of Sunday sacredness. Roger, when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember a song that came out talking about the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've seen the development of the New Age and I wondered if back when you were involved in spirit worship, if they talked about New Age at all. Oh, yes. It was a big thing that uh, was coming up, one of the uh, major deceptions of the last days. Mm. And the priest uh, told us, uh, he had, we talked uh, quite a while, and uh, then he said, uh, could I have a little bit more of your time? I want to tell you something very fascinating. He says, the grand plain, the master's grand plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continued, you know, after we uh, expressed ourselves that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff because he says spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And he went on saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences. Are you familiar with out-of-body experiences? Mm -hmm. I've read about them. In other words, so a person's uh, there's some persons are supposed to be able to, you know, uh, they believe in their immortal soul. Astral immortal soul projection. Pro yes, right. Goes into different parts of the world and sees things and come back and then they write all about it. You know. I have heard of that. So, uh, due to the fact that the millions of the earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul, it has to be readily, readily accepted when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people of the lane, you see. Now, what is a trans medium? It's a channeler today. What, what is known today as a channeler? Channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley MacLaine's experience of getting involved with spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, suppose inhabitants of far distant plants in the galaxies, I taped the whole thing, it's three hours. Yes. And you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. So he went on explaining about the fact 
that the spirits will show themselves willing to give valuable guidance that will not only help people avoid the destruction of the planet, but that will cause it to enter into a higher state of existence. For instance, he said, the spirits will, will uh, promise, and this is a big word, promise, that if their recommendations are followed carefully, they will usher in a glorious new age of peace and prosperity, and there, there'll be, um, well, there'll be no more wars, you see? Uh, there'll be no more famines, there'll be no more uh, people getting uh, unhappy with one another. Neighbors will love neighbor, and uh, social unrest will not take place no more. It'll be sure, uh, there'll be <laughs> perfect happiness for a thousand years, that's what the Spirit is going to promise. And Almost we'll, like the Garden of Eden created all uh -huh. over again. And now we find that a lot of preachers are, are preaching the great age of uh, glorious new age of victory, victory over wars, victory over social unrest, victory over famines, and victory over all kinds of... Uh, and he things. used the words new age to describe well, what was coming. It would be a glorious new age, yeah. And uh, this is exactly what the movement is all about today. And he went on and said, as I said earlier, <laughs> that as life on this planet becomes more and more difficult and calamities will strike the planet more and more frequently, the spirits at that time is go are going to put all their effort to impress religious leaders, to bring before the, the masses of the earth the, the sacredness of Sunday. See? They will teach Sunday sacredness. And with the religious leaders, looking forward to a thousand years of perfect peace on earth, they will put all their effort into it. Then laws will be passed by governments. Uh, yeah, when one person asks, what's going to happen about people that don't believe in the Spirit's uh, recommendation? <laughs> the priest says, that would be no problem at all. Laws will be passed by governments that will force people to go along with it, regardless of whether they believe in it or not. And he says, the law enforcement officers will explain to people, make it clear that such a law is necessary to assure the well-being of all people. He says the laws will be passed with no effort at all. And then he, he went on and he, and, and he said about the fact that um, uh, the venerable day of the sun, which in ages past was such an irritant to the Creator. All the, these great nations and other nations, the smaller ones, were all involved in sun worship. And in those centuries, the Creator found that teaching of the worship of the sun to be a terrible irritant. And he said, it is going again to take place, but not in worshiping the sun, in remembering Sunday to keep it holy. He made a statement I would never forget. He says, by the observance of the day upon which the master, Satan, has placed the unction of his authority and power, He receives homage, regardless of whom people claim to worship. Isn't that something? Hmm. So, can you understand now why I had 28 Bible studies in one week and started to, to go to church on Sabbath, and I never missed since uh, until I began to be sick. Um, the issue of a day of worship came up in that meeting. Mm -hmm. Was Sunday the only day mentioned? Well, you see, the, the priest mentioned yes about the fact Satan has chosen Sunday as his day. The Creator has chosen the seventh day of the week. Lucifer has chosen to call his day the first day of the week, Sunday. See, And regardless of what people uh, claim to, to worship, the worship being God, the Creator, by observing that day, that particular day, they are bringing homage and respect. Now, at that time in your life, you were 20 years old or so. Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard of a Seventh-day Adventist? Never in my life. In no, that they meeting... They didn't talk about Seventh-day Adventist. They talked strictly about Adventist. Well, they just talked... But they did... The word Adventist yeah. was mentioned. 
the priest was telling us <coughs> that uh, necromancy, as I mentioned earlier, is the belief that the dead have entered into, into a higher state of existence, etc. And he says, for centuries, friendly demon spirits have worked diligently to establish and uphold in the religious convictions of all people the belief that man has an immortal soul. See? Then he boasted about the fact that the master was so smart in that he had this, deceived the whole world even this, in this age of great scientific knowledge and, and, and understanding. Then one person put his hand up. Okay. He says, yeah, yes, we want to say something. He says, what about the...